It's a story of sex, lies, and politics, of polygraphs, bloodstains, and dead ends. And for one anguished family, a missing daughter. What really happened to Chandra Levy? We'll go beyond the hype and headlines and search for answers. Plus, in our exclusive poll, the people who voted for Condit tell us what they think of him now. Join us for Vanished, Where's Chandra Levy? Saturday, Gay Ed. It could become part of your child's school curriculum. We report both sides of the story. You decide. Fair and balanced this weekend, only on Fox. Today, only on Entertainment Coast to Coast. We're at ground zero for the box office battle this weekend. At the Swing and His Premier Party, we're asking, can the apes take over the planet from Jurassic Park 3? And how Hollywood made those dinosaurs look so real. Plus, sweat and wild thrills of T-Rex here at Universal Studios Jurassic Park Summer Splat. All up next on Entertainment Coast to Coast. You don't want to miss this party. Fox News Live, I'm Derry Alexander. The president promises to enable the disabled. During his weekly radio address, Mr. Bush praised the Americans with Disabilities Act, signed by his father, for giving disabled people more freedom. As people with disabilities find more opportunities to use their gifts and talents, we also become a stronger, more productive nation. Some barriers remain, however, and as long as they stand, our work is unfinished. President Bush is proposing to improve handicap access and technology. Democrats are complaining that the president's plan to protect patients' Bill of Rights would leave some unprotected. Negotiators for both parties are looking over the proposal, but one senator argues delays make the need for change even more critical. It's wrong to delay any longer. For every day we delay, 7,000 patients are denied a referral for needed specialty care. For every day we delay, 10,000 patients are denied coverage of a needed diagnostic test. And for every day we delay, 14,000 patients are denied coverage of a recommended prescription drug. Secretary of State Colin Powell says he's making progress in talks with the Chinese. Powell spent Saturday morning talking to leaders about a key number of issues, including human rights and weapons exports. He assured China that the proposed missile defense system would not threaten them. President Bush plans to visit China in October. And finally, forget about good, clean fun. These kids are getting downright dirty and not getting any heat from mom and dad. They're splashing around in the mud for the annual Mighty Mud Mania in Scottsdale, Arizona. Those are some of the stories making headlines. Our next update at the bottom of the hour. Stay tuned for entertainment coast to coast. and welcome to the show that covers entertainment from coast to coast. I'm Juliet Huddy at Universal Studios Hollywood. And I'm Bill McCuddy at the Planet of the Apes premiere, the biggest party of the summer. This week, men go ape for Julia Roberts, but America's sweetheart breaks a lot of hearts in real life. And cutie Keanu Reeves playing hardball with some young teens in his new movie. We've got a first look just for you. We're ready with the latest from Universal Studios Hollywood. And from the premiere of Planet of the Apes here in New York, we've got both coasts covered because this is entertainment coast to coast. Universal Studios Hollywood. This is the Jurassic Park Summer Splash Ride. Speaking of splashes, you just saw that boat. It came down an 84-foot drop, and in just a few minutes, I will be braiding it and going down that drop. I'll also be talking to Trevor Morgan. He's one of the stars of Jurassic Park. That's not just the reason that we're out here in front of the ride. We're also out here because the Universal Studios crew is going to be celebrating the 20 millionth passenger on this thing. Now, again, Wait a second, because I'm going to be going down this ride with some of my girlfriends, and we are going to have fun. But, Bill, I know you're having some fun with the apes up there. Take it away. <laughs> Thanks, Juliet. I'm in the shadow of a simian god, and we begin the Hollywood hot sheet with Planet of the Apes rumor control. Director Tim Burton was so busy making the movie, he didn't have time to set the record straight. Well, he does now exclusively for us. No, no, none no, of that. that wasn't true. I mean, we shot the ending of this about three quarters, one ending. Again, I've read, you know, the internet has this amazing ability to create, ama you know, you know, so you three-headed babies. You Twenty know. scripted endings. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know. But you really I had, only shot I one. I had sex with a chimp. You know, I did. You know, 
left, all whatever, you know, it's a beautiful new world we live in. Speaking of sex with a chimp, Burton also threw cold water on that Wahlberg and Bonham Carter love scene. Never happened, adding, the last time he checked, that was called bestiality, and this is a PG-13 film. All right, speaking of rumors, three this week that aren't true. First, Jennifer and Brad are not expecting that baby, despite what a German magazine said. They misquoted Pitt. And former Beatle George Harrison, battling cancer, says he did not tell a London tabloid he's going to die soon. That's good news. And tennis ace Anna Kornikova has not tied the knot. All just nasty rumors. Another Big Brother 2 contestant with a rap sheet? That's right. Housemate Michael served three years probation for busting into the set of Batman and Robin the movie. He was caught taking pictures for tabloid TV. This comes after brother Justin got the boot for threatening another contestant with a knife. All right, Juliet, you're up. He stars in a movie about dinosaurs, but he is no dinosaur. He's 14 years old. <laughs> Trevor Morgan, one of the stars of the movie Jurassic Park. All right, nice, nice seeing, seeing you. you Jen. Um, you just, uh, you, you look a little wet, sweetheart. What's going on? I have um, last couple minutes ago, I just got off my fifth time on the Jurassic Park ride So how, today. how weird is it for you to be in the movie, see yourself on the big screen, and then riding this, this gigantic attraction at a very important park? It's awesome! Um, we actually used to sneak off the lot like during lunchtime and go on Jurassic Park. So, I mean, this, we, I've been on a couple times before, but now it's new. I mean, they've three times more wetter. <laughs> three times more wetter. I mean, Very well said. Again, remember, water. folks, he's 14 years Excuse old. Um, so, okay, the movie's out. It's doing. It's doing well. Is it? I mean, now it's out. What's it's, up? It's awesome. Um, I've been waiting for this day ever since we wrapped. Um, Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> it's just been really great. I'm very, very happy on how well it's done at the box office, and that's all you can really hope for, that people like the movie. Are you starting to get recognized now? Um, here and there, not so much. I yet. see some, some little kiss marks on your cheeks. I'm not going to ask about that. But, <laughs> well, you uh, can if you'd like to. Oh, well, gee, thank you very much. I think you're a little young for me, though, Trevor. All right, so it's great uh, <laughs> having you here. No, I'm going to ask. Oh. <laughs> Don't want to give us away. <laughs> Thanks for being here. I know you like the dinosaur better yeah. than me. I mean, oh. come on, don't they all? Thanks for being here, sweetie. Good luck Thank in your you movie. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bill, back to you. All right, thanks, Juliet. Up next on Coast to Coast, Mark Wahlberg's skittish about skivvies. He tells us his biggest fear when it came to starring in Planet of the Apes. Plus, Juliet takes the dinosaur plunge. We've got it on tape. But first, a look at some of the new faces at Jurassic Park. And you thought T-Rex had a bad attitude. Meet Spinosaurus, the new guy in charge at Jurassic Park. They are, in fact, the largest of all meat eaters. And get this, the model used in the film stood 44 feet tall and weighed 13 tons, and it still wasn't life-size. The other new face on the island is the Pteranodon. I think the audience for a long time has been hoping that we would bring flying dinosaurs into this genre. Uh, excuse us, but Pteranodon's not exactly a dinosaur. It's a flying reptile, a very big reptile. Their wingspan stretches more than 30 feet, about the length of a school bus. Any full-size SUV can tackle the wilderness. Coping with the urban jungle also matters to engineer Thad Stump. For the Yukon XL, his team completely re-engineered the suspension and tightened the turning radius to make the Yukon XL surprisingly agile. Thad knows that while SUVs have gotten bigger, parking spaces have not. Hey, Dan, how about that conference call tomorrow? Mm, it just doesn't feel right to me. Whatever happened to FaceTime? Somebody should go to Cleveland. I'll go. This wouldn't have anything to do with Holiday Inn Express double points. No, what? That's double, that's, I don't, wow. Okay, I, I, I don't even know where that came from. When I get back from Cleveland, we'll talk. There's a way to remove dust and not just move it around. Swiffer cloths have lift and lock pockets to help attract and trap dust and dirt with the swipe of a hand. The Swiffer system cleans even hard to reach places. And when you're done, just throw the dust away. 
When Swiffer's the one, consider it done. It was a tragedy that took 230 lives. We investigate the crash of TWA Flight 800. If the case is closed, why do questions remain? The notion that someone could shoot the plane down a missile was not that far-fetched. We talked to former FBI investigator Robert Kostrom. Then, how safe is air travel? We found cracked wire, chafed wire, broken wire. We have a shocking report. Plus, there is never going to be closure. It's the family still trying to cope with their loss. Join us for a Fox News Channel special, The Tragedy of TWA 800. We're here at Jurassic Park Summer Splash the Ride, where they're celebrating the 20 millionth rider on one of these boats. Now, I'm hearing some rumors. I think it's supposed to be pretty scary. I'm going to check it out for myself. So we're getting on now. I'm not concerned about this ride. I've heard some rumors. All right, here we go. I like dinosaurs. I have no problems with dinosaurs. Do we need any throw-up bags or anything? Okay. No big thing. No big thing. <laughs> Nicely done, Juliet. Usually I'm the one who's all wet. Well, now, one of the most anticipated films of the year. Fans of the original weren't sure Mark Wahlberg could walk in Charlton Heston's sandals. And you know what? Wahlberg wasn't sure either. Mark Wahlberg didn't know anything about his role when he agreed to make Planet of the Apes for director Tim Burton. He's one of the few guys that I would do anything for. That interesting and that talented. And um, so I said, Tim, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Anything, that is, except wear a loincloth like Charlton Heston did in the original. But after his first meeting with the director, he still didn't know what role he was going to play? Come on. I left there thinking, well, God, I don't want to be an ape. And, and then he called me and said he wants me for the astronaut role. And then I was like, well, wait, you know, Charlton Heston wore a loincloth the entire time. And he was barefoot. Okay. You got a thing about bare feet? Well, we're running around and people stepping on your feet, yeah, I got sensitive feet now. <laughs> so the guy who used to infamously model Calvin Klein underwear had a problem with wearing something too revealing? He says Burton would have been waiting. I would have come out in a loincloth and he would have been standing there with like George Clooney and a bunch of my friends and taking pictures of me just to pass around and me in the loincloth. And you know the poster would have been you in like the Calvin Klein pose with the yes, loincloth. Yes. You said no way am I going to do that. Yeah, they probably would have been Calvin Klein. <laughs> The They'd be selling them right now. We're doing a launch tomorrow. <laughs> did you find Helena sexy in that getup? Extremely. Extremely. Everybody did. And she was barefoot. She's got no problem with that. Well, no, she's got sandals on her on her paws. Really? Yeah. Not upstairs. Not when I just interviewed her. Oh, right now? We shook oh, hand to foot. Really? Yeah. Is she doing that? Yeah. Mark? She really did, Mark. In the film, her character actually writes with that uh, paw. In real life, she's game for anything. I've been given these really bony prehensile toes anyway, so I thought I might as well use them. May I shake? You can shake. Yes. Yeah. But you have Cheers. to sort of like... Oh, yeah. Them. See, you are the sexy shake. one. Yeah. Well, I'd like to see that. Take that shoe and sock off. I'd like... Oh, you don't want to see five. that. Give me five. You don't want to see that. <laughs> not going to happen? No. Uh, but, um, she, you're not serious. Yes, I am completely serious. Nice. nice. Maybe Wahlberg will take off his shoes for the next installment. That's right, he's ready to go ape one more time. If Tim's in, I'm in. It's up to Tim. We'll know more after our planet sees this planet this weekend. All right, now for our quote of the week. Another highly anticipated film from over 30 years ago, Apocalypse Now. It comes back to theaters next month. Lawrence Fishburne was just 15 years old when he co-starred in the epic. So all of that dope in the movie, was it real? Of course. <laughs> it's 1976, man. <laughs> Drugs were okay then. All right, that's why it looks so real. By the way, he is off to Australia for two years to make the next two Matrix movies. Hey, Juliet, have you dried off yet? All right, you guys, here at Universal Studios, it's not just about old dinosaurs. No, no, not at all. There are also live animals. And coming up, I'm going to show you some of those live animals, how they train them for TV and film. He's not a live animal. He's, he's a human being, believe it or not. <laughs> Would you like a fish? Oh, no thank you. I've eaten already. 
A to Beaver offers you a fish, you take the fish. They've been acting and doing some outrageous stunts in movies, commercials, and on TV for years, but training these animals to look natural is no small feat. Oh, yeah. We're actually here at Animal Planet Live on the stage, and joining me over here to show me how she trains these incredible little furry creatures, not so furry, we're going to see some really scary, slimy ones later. This is Sandra Scheinberg, monkey woman. Now, how do you train something like this? You get a monkey. What do you do? Well, How do you begin to, to even think about training well, one? First, you have to build a relationship with them. We take her home. She's with me pretty much 24 hours. She's here with me at work, and we work together at work. All right, well, why don't you show me what, the, uh, what are some of the great things she can do? Okay. Stand up. Stand up. Stay. Wave. Good. Clap. Jump. 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 Very good. All right. Now it's cheat time. Oh, yay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, so this is my, my new friend. Now, <laughs> what exactly is this? Give us the lowdown. This is an Beautiful. albino Burma, Burmese python. So it's, it's actually one, it's one of the largest of the constrictor snakes. Okay. A constrictor snake, and that yeah. would mean... Means it exactly it suffocates oh, its prey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> On that note... Would you like to hold it? Sure, <laughs> sure. She is really beautiful, and she is wrapping herself around me a little bit too much. <laughs> okay, Mr. Jim. <laughs> So, Tia, I'm thinking I could be your agent, maybe Planet of the Apes, too. I don't know. Bill, what do you think? We've got a lot more coming up, including a first look at Julia Roberts' real-life sweetheart. She plays one in the new hit movie, but why can't this pretty woman find true love? And see if you can answer this coast-to-coast -coast quiz. How many original cast members from the 1968 Planet of the Apes also appear in this year's Planet of the Apes? Is it one, two, or three actors? Just because you're strong doesn't mean you can't be gentle. That's also true of Imodium AD. Gentler than you thought, effective as you think. Celebrate! Celebrate! Ask your doctor if Celebrex is right for you. Celebrate! Toyota Corolla. Loved by people all over the world. <laughs> Would you like to lower your monthly mortgage payments or use the equity in your home to consolidate your credit card or other debts? Just log on to Ditech.com or call 1-800-71-FIX. Today's low fixed rate with zero points is only 6.990%. Lower interest rates, lower monthly payments. It's smart money from Ditech.com. For fast, friendly service, apply online or call 1-800-71-FIX right now. Oh, boy. What's in the truck? It's kind of hard to explain. Uh -huh. Open it up. Delphi may be new to some people, but we've been around. Developing advanced technologies that use electronics to replace mechanical systems and creating new energy solutions for the vehicles of tomorrow. Delphi Automotive Systems, driving tomorrow's technology. Push the tempo, push the tempo, push the tempo, push the tempo. Come on, we're going to miss half the hour. Does this thing go any faster? There's only one captain of this love boat. Push the tempo, push the tempo, push the tempo, push the tempo.
We are back with that answer to your Coast to Coast quiz. How many original cast members from the 1968 version appear in this year's Apes? Well, the answer is B, two. Charlton Heston and Linda Harrison. Both have cameos in the new Ape movie. We can't show you those movie cameos, however, because those scenes are embargoed. They don't want you to see what they look like. It'll be a surprise when you go and see it. And speaking of surprises, what's next, Juliet? All right, Bill, well, you know what? You may have the apes, but I've got the dinosaurs. Thank you very much. I've got my little Ultrasaurus friends, uh, Mike and Jose, back here. They're sweethearts. And speaking of sweethearts, America's sweetheart, Julia Roberts. Her film was number two at the box office in its opening weekend. The question is, why is this Oscar-winning beauty's love life not number one? We caught up with Julia and her lost love. She's gorgeous, famous, and at a cool 20 million per picture, one of the richest women in Hollywood. It's gonna cost you. Still, when it comes to love, this pretty woman's been through some ugly times. That's a shame. In America's Sweethearts, Roberts is caught in a love triangle involving a Hollywood mega couple who've called it quits but keeps smiling for the cameras. The on screen media scrutiny, perhaps hitting a little too close to home for Roberts off screen. As the buzz on Sweethearts began to build, her four-year romance with actor Benjamin Bratt crumbled. John Cusack says the parallels between the film and his co-star's personal life can't exactly hurt the movie. I think it's probably free money for everybody. I mean, from the studio's point of view, you know? Because the film's about that and she's been going through I don't know what's going on with her because I don't read a lot of that, a lot of those magazines, but whatever it is, I'm sure that it fits in nicely. Of course, Robert's romantic escapades have been fodder for the tabs for nearly 15 years, starting with her Satisfaction co-star, Liam Neeson, in 1988. That next year, another onset affair, this time with Steel Magnolia's Dylan McDermott. Bride seems to be a bit hesitant. In 1990, Robert starred as a real-life runaway bride, taking off just days before her much-publicized wedding to Flatliners co-star Kiefer Sutherland with his buddy, the smoldering Jason Patrick. Perhaps stepping out of character for a moment, in 1993, Roberts made beautiful music with the talented but hardly hunky Lyle Lovett, even married him. But alas, he was more best friend than wedding partner. 1995, Daniel Day-Lewis. 1996, Matthew Perry. Finally, 1997, America's own sweetheart made what friends thought was a great judgment, teaming up with Law & Order's Benjamin Bratt. If somebody has to get some other than me, it might as well be Madonna. At the next Best Thing premiere, it seemed the superstar with a megawatt smile had finally met her man. But apparently, it wasn't the best thing for Julia. Some blame the breakup on her career. Others speculate it was her latest co-star, George Clooney. Is America's Sweethearts a case of art imitating life? Maybe. But to this Oscar winner, it's all just entertainment. The film's a farce. It's extreme to be funny. It's not. There's no, it's just only like a toe in reality. It's not meant to be a documentary. All right, Bill, we got to take a break. I think my little dinosaurs back here are getting hungry. I better feed them. We've heard what's hitting the box office this weekend. Now let's take a look at what's coming up next weekend. We'll give you a sneak peek at Rush Hour 2 and the rest of your coming distractions, including a first look at Keanu Reeves and Hardball. Enjoy something made better with time. Slow roast coffee from Maxwell House. It's worth spending time with. Hey, you like delivery pizza? I like delivery pizza. Um, it's not delivery. It's yeah. It's French. For fresh baked pizza at home, it's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. <laughs> Want more from a sport utility? Test drive the all-wheel drive Subaru Outback. More ground clearance than a Ford Explorer Sport. More cargo space than a Jeep Cherokee. More miles per gallon than any leading midsize SUV. Add a smooth car-like ride and you have a sport utility with a whole lot more. Outback, the world's first sport utility wagon. Get financing as low as 2.9% APR on all 2001 models. Out here, I'm in command. So am I supposed to say, slow down guys, I'm constipated? I don't think so. You try to eat right. Sometimes you can't. Harsh chemical laxatives, they can kick in whenever and wherever. Not an option. 
So I rely on doctor-recommended Metamucil. It's got 100% natural fiber. Works with my body, gently, which is important to a sensitive guy like myself. Metamucil, the doctor's natural choice for regularity. To you, it's a PC. But to your kids, it's a laboratory, a museum, or a rainforest. The Compact Presario 5000T with Intel Pentium 3 processor. It's a place where your child can explore a world of ideas. And it's just $889. Let us build one for you. Call 1-800-331-8154 today and get a compact printer for just a dollar more. Hey, why just take your kids to school when you can take them farther than they ever dreamed? We're looking at a live picture right now. And there's no police presence down here. Oh, shit. The gunman on the loose. The chase is on. This is our up. job, and we're going to stick with it. Let himself on we can fire. get the close-up, we can get everything we need. The people on the ground don't even know we're there. Saturday, a brutal crime scene, an unsolved mystery, a shroud of suspicion. It's an explosive expose on the Martha Moxley murder, this weekend on Crime Wave. Welcome back. Planet of the Apes monkeying around at the box office this weekend big time. But what will it have to compete with next weekend? Angelina Jolie, a troubled bride? Gee, where did she draw on that as an actress? And were she and Antonio Banderas really fooling around for real on the set of Original Sin? Ah, these are the eternal questions. And speaking of eternal, wasn't this supposed to come out last fall? I've seen the trailer so many times, the stars are starting to wave at me from the screen. Next, director Gary Marshall is back with a new pretty woman and a script that's basically the same thing in The Princess Diaries. Shut! This is Anne Hathaway. She's a 16-year-old street-smart New Yorker. Wait, she's a princess, a real one. Wait, she's both. Can Grandmother Julie Andrews teach her to be regal? What do you think? Finally, do I really have to say anything besides Rush Hour 2? I'm sorry, man. All y'all look alike. Didn't think so. But this one looks even funnier, if that's possible. Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan may suddenly make us glad it's a summer of sequels. I'm an undercover agent. Show us a badge or something. Show it again. Uh -oh. And those are your coming distractions. All right, well, yes, I finally dried off. Now I gotta take care of my uh, little stegosaurus friend over there. He's hungry and he gets so cranky. And speaking of cranky, a guy who's never cranky, FoxNews.com's Roger Friedman with all the celebrity scoop. Roger, baby, take it away. I'm not so cranky, Juliet, but thanks. Are Bridget Jones and Zeta Jones getting together? If Miramax has its way, it looks like they may. Bridget Jones star Renee Zellweger and actress Catherine Zeta-Jones seem to be the most current choices to star in the big screen version of the musical Chicago. You may recall that Chicago, which has been a non-stop hit on Broadway and around the world, was supposed to star Goldie Hawn and Madonna, but a lot's happened since those plans fell apart some years ago. Hawn has moved on to her own projects, and Madonna fell out with Miramax when she left the movie Music of the Heart was replaced by Meryl Streep. Now Zellweger, a Miramax favorite and probable Oscar nominee for Bridget Jones' Diary, is considering joining Zeta Jones in the very demanding movie version of the show. So Chicago may be coming to theaters for Christmas 2002. Also coming in the future is a movie about the future. Oscar-winning director Francis Ford Coppola tells me he still has at least one big saga left in him, a la The Godfather and Apocalypse Now, which is being re-released in an expanded version this Friday. Coppola says that he wants to make a movie about the future. Not science fiction, he says, but it would be about our real near future, how it will look and how it will feel with state-of-the-art technology. Meanwhile, Coppola is still interested in things past. He's producing actor Robert Duvall's Tango movie called Assassination Tango, which should hit theaters next year. And finally, what about that new Michael Jackson album? Will we ever hear it? Jackson calls himself the king of pop and still holds the record for most copies of one album sold, 22 million for Thriller, which was released in 1983. I am told that Jackson's new album, called Invincible, has had a very rocky road getting to the finish line. Sony apparently rejected an entire album which Jackson turned in last year and sent him back to the drawing board. As of last week, Jackson and producer Bruce Swedean were still at work on the final product, which is still due in stores September 25th. Back to you, Juliet. All right, thanks a lot, Roger. Now, before we go, Bill, Keanu Reeves forced to coach a Little League team to make good on the debt and ends up hitting a home run in hardball out this fall. And we've got a quickie preview just for you. We leave you now with the first look at Keanu Reeves in Hardball. At Universal Studios Hollywood, I'm Juliet Huddy. And here in New York, I'm Bill McCuddy. We're entertainment coast to coast and host to host. See you next time. Bill, better back the heck up.
on top. <laughs> Miles Penfield the second. Damn, Miles, you stink. What's up, Kofi? You scared of the ball? <laughs> I think it's wonderful that you're teaching these boys to play baseball. Oh my God, he caught me. Take a good look at yourself and be proud. Yeah.